Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Celeste. Today we're going to try something out uh, that's that's a little bit new. We're going to make our way through the crisp, golden, sun-soaked chapter 4 with the speedrun uh, speed clock running. And that'll give you an idea if I have to skip ahead of how long a screen had me stuck. And also it'll help me gauge what a good episode length will be, hopefully, if this works as intended. And if you don't like it, you can always let me know in the comments, and I will consider it uh, consider turning it off next time. Oh, burb! So already we've seen a couple of new things. We've we've seen a small handful of new features in this level. Uh, we've now seen the orbs. Oh, that's a cute little secret there. It's just a conspicuous wall is all. There's no other real clue. Oh great, you again. Well, well, I didn't expect to see you up here. I'm glad you're still in one piece. I see you made it through the hotel. Did you meet Mr. Oshiro? I met him alright. He chased me out of there after I cleaned up a bunch of junk for him. <laughs> that sounds like quite a morning. Oh, sure, is a lost soul, dear. That place is much more than just a hotel to him. Don't make him your project. You know what I think? I think this mountain drove both of you crazy. So expressive. You know, you're not the first person to say that. That little wink. Oh my god, maybe you're right. Look at how much life and verve and bounce that has. This small little gif, basically. This gif of a portrait. The way I see it, the mountain can't bring out anything that isn't already in you. But you gotta be a few crows short of a murder to live up here in the first place, right? That's such a good phrase, too. A few crows short of a murder. What are you even talking about? Oh, I'm just rambling like the old bat I am. Are you ready to give up? I know a shortcut back to your car. Back off, lady. I'm heading for the summit. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between stubbornness and determination, isn't it? You remind me of myself when I was young. Good luck. Mind the wind. So at that point, you have to wonder, what wind? Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, hon. Ah, you see that flag? We have now grounded this in space. And this is yet another new obstacle introduced in Chapter 4. We have about four new mechanics altogether, and we've now seen all of them. Oops. Oh, I saved that. Really good job. <laughs> These little orbs are fun. It's just you jump into them and release in a direction. Uh, it'll kick you out automatically after a second. Ah, that's introducing another new wrinkle on this mechanic we were introduced to earlier. Oops. Uh, I have to bounce back. After you come out the other side of an, of an orb, it resets your air dash, which is the one of the most important aspects of that mechanic. Now we have the strong wind. Uh, we have the orbs again. We have the bouncy clouds, which you saw before. Ooh! <laughs> Oh, I, I couldn't save that at the end. Um, the clouds are color-coded. The normal colored clouds are uh, infinite. But the pink ones you saw... Ooh, why was I having such a hard time with that screen? Oh, this is a fun one. The pink ones will dissipate. And then one more loop around. That's just a cute little room. So we have quite a bit going on now. And we're actually not done. There's one more thing in this level, which I think is coming up on one of the next few screens. Oh, this is introducing us to the cycle-based wind and the much stronger gale. Ooh, I keep just barely missing it. You can see how much resistance it provides. And they do this clever thing where they visually represent the wind. So you can see not only which direction it's blowing, but how hard. Uh, so this is likely going to be the first path you see and go down. 
when you enter this screen. And it's totally optional. It looks like progress, but it's actually just one of many, many optional paths. This is that other final mechanic, these blocks that you can get on top of and pile it. Uh, and as we ride it up, we realize something. This is yet another optional route. It shows us where we ultimately want to go, which is to the top here, where you can see the shafts of light. But there's quite a bit going on. There are so many little side paths. You know, I didn't think much of this level, this chapter, my first time through, but it's actually incredibly clever how it eases you into quite a few different mechanics for now, four that are brand new, not to not even including the ones that we've already learned in the previous chapters, uh, some of which make a return, but not all, not yet. They will eventually though, which is cool. So when we pilot it straight up, we have these two extra paths. There's just, they're all over the place. It honeycombs everywhere. But it also eases you into all these mechanics. And some of them you don't have really much of a, ooh, much of a frame of reference for because they aren't terribly commonplace. So this one, it starts you off with the common stuff mostly, which is mainly the wind. You know, first it shows you the wind as an impediment and then as a way in which it can propel you. Um, and then, oh, this is fun how you have to pilot this just to get to the right spot. Ah, damn it. It's giving me a harder time than it should because this is really not difficult. <laughs> I'm just being silly. Also does give you a chance to realize that if, oops, caught it on the ledge. If it does get caught for too long, uh, it will explode. And that actually comes into play later. There are puzzles that take advantage of that, but that's, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Also, cute little secret. Damn, I love this level. Um, yeah, some of these mechanics are not things that you have a lot of experience with. I think this might be the cassette room, am I right? Oh no, this is the crystal heart room. Uh, we're gonna leave that for now, but note that you can dash through this, because that is important. If you want to pursue this on your own. <laughs> Just teasing that. Uh, but anyway. So you have the wind and the various ways that the wind is used. And then you have the bouncy clouds. And those things are common in platformers. So if you've played platformers before, you have a frame of reference. And if you don't, they're kind of obvious mechanics anyway from just a, a small amount of experimentation. And the game forces you to interact with them immediately. Oh, this is a fun one too. And then the orbs and the blocks that you pilot like this are where the structure of the level actually aids uh, how it how the game teaches you so much. Because it this level, as you saw, has parts that are pretty wide open. There are a lot of secrets, but there are also a lot of noticeable side paths, like in that ascent we had just now. And they're optional, but they aren't secrets either. They're really obvious, and you're supposed to notice them and get curious and explore. In fact, to get to the, the correct door to move forward to progress, we had to pass by all of those other things. And to get anywhere, you have to figure out how a mechanic works, which is that piloted platform. To even get to progress, you have to first figure that out. And you'll naturally want to use it because you're curious about all the side paths. And those side paths will also introduce you uh, to the pilotable blocks. Whoops, this... I can, I can save this. Whew, yeah. Um, it, it's the most open level so far and the most full of honeycombs we've seen yet. Ooh, shit. I also think this level is substantially easier than the previous level, which is a bit funny. It's not a cakewalk, and there are definitely some, some 
screens that will test you. But overall, I don't think it's too bad. And I think that might... There is there is a couple of possible reasons for that. I think one of them might be that it is a bit more of a puzzle level, or at least the platforming is more oriented towards uh, puzzles of, like, figuring out how to use the mechanics rather than um, being, like, mechanical tests or tests of dexterity and precision necessarily. I think that takes a little bit of a backseat here to just uh, puzzles about... or er, er, platforming rooms about figuring out how mechanics work together in weird ways. Uh, and a lot of that comes down to, like, what are the nuances of these pilotable blocks when you combine them with different things? Like, this is this is a super cool room. Uh, it's a kind of a demanding one, but it's so nice, because you have to get out ahead of the block uh, for first, uh, at first to land on a block that you have to uh, destroy by just putting your weight on it. And then the second one, you have to get out ahead of the block that you're piloting so that you can hit a key to move something out of the way. And it's hectic and it's cool and it takes a few tries to be like, how am I going to get around all of these obstacles? What am I doing here? What do I need to do and when? Like the process of figuring that room out is is really, really fun. God, that one's good. Y'all, I already really love Celeste. I feel like this is going to be one of those LPs where I walk away and I love it even more for having given it a second go through. God, the initial design of this level is really inventive, but then there's also just how they arrange all these toys together in this big toy box. It's so, so good. They just combine these elements in, in such clever ways and it makes them appear even more clever because it's novel. It's novel, too. It's a combination of, like, three or four of these mechanics at a time, these new ones, but also because some of them are, like I said, not so common in platformers. You don't usually get to see rooms constructed around those types of things, let alone these combinations of things. So they have this novel design space to work with, just because they had this cool, inventive foundation to build from. Also, this is the most uh, conspicuous thing ever, except we can't dash into the wall there, so what can we do here? Why am I getting all these diagonal dashes? Okay, there we go. We just had to reveal that. What is it? What is happening? Why are my fingers being very stupid? Okay. <laughs> my fingers just did not want to. And that was the best! That was the dumbest! <laughs> okay, so we go left, up, right, and over for a full circle. We have a full view of the upcoming challenge were we to pursue it for that one single berry. And now we have to really fight the wind. You have to scrape and claw and scratch for like every inch against uh, the, the this zephyr. This gale force wind. Also, this room is cool as hell. It's tricky. It's one of the trickier rooms in uh, this whole level, but damn, it's cool. Right now, what I'm failing at is getting my timing right on the bounce, because that's one of the mechanics of, of the cloud. You have to time the bounce to get the maximum amount of height. You really have to get the momentum right, especially when you're fighting wind like this. So you have to get to the orb in time. You have a very limited window to do this. It's really tight. God, that's fun. And then the wind picks up even further. And now there are snowballs flying at you. And they do that. So that's going to do it for now. <clears throat> Take it easy. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks for watching as well. <laughs>